Imagine I did all that without recording. I did all that without recording, didn't I? What's up guys, my name is Jerrell, and today I'm gonna give you my tips on how to be successful with the CompTIA A plus exam. If you're wondering why I'm laughing, it's because I recorded all this on my cameras without recording it on the microphone, so uh, I just had to do this whole take all over again. And what can you do but laugh? So we're back to it. Uh, I just wanna preface this video by saying what this video is not. So it's not a breakdown of what's on the exam nor a regurgitated list of study tools that you can use. So if that's what you're looking for specifically, I'll have links to resources from teachers like Jason Dion, Mike Myers, and Professor Messer in my description below. But there's plenty of videos with that sort of information out there already, but I haven't seen anyone put a video with the important mental preparation on YouTube. So it's the mindset that you're gonna need going into the exam and the motivation you'll need if you haven't decided whether or not the field of IT is even for you. So what this video is going to be about is me sharing my learning style and how knowing that about yourself will dramatically affect the way you perform on this exam. My goal is to present inspiring, motivational tips and resources because the A-plus is very comprehensive. There's lots of different things that it covers. So I'm here to help you out and to chunk down that information so that the process feels totally possible and you get inspired to go out there and get certified. So I wanna start off by describing who I am and why I'm sharing this video with you. I'm a level two field engineer certified with the Google IT Support Professional Certification and CompTIA's A-plus certification. So I learned with Prescolis, which is an educational nonprofit based out of the Bronx in New York. And I graduated in May of 2021 with those certifications. I learned so much along this journey and I know that my unique perspective will be something you can relate to and that can inspire you along with your journey breaking into IT. A quick side note, up until November of 2020, I was working as a audiovisual technician in New York and that had been my career for the past three to four years up until this year. So I was not in IT, I'm very new to the field. I actually just joined the program in February of this year and I graduated in two to three months, got my certifications and as as of August of 2021 now I'm working in my first job as a level 2 engineer so I just want to say that's how quick your career can change if you choose to make this decision get the certifications and get a job so especially going through a program like Prescolas they had job placement opportunities which dramatically helped me expedite that process but for anyone who's considering whether or not like you know you have to go back to college and get like a master's degree or you have to get a uh, undergraduate degree in computer science like those are all questions I was wondering about and I went on YouTube and researched about but what I love about IT is that it's accepting for people of all different backgrounds so you can literally come into this field with an undergrad degree in education or communication like myself I study broadcasting and digital media and choose to go into IT and make that change happen within less than a year so you get certified and then you choose which area of IT you want to go into so there's you know cybersecurity, system administration network administration there's coding front-end development so there's a lot of stuff that I don't even know too much about but I just know I want to be more into like the network side of things and so that's why right now I'm actually pursuing my network plus certification and I'm back with Prescola so grateful for them to have an alumni program and the best part about this program which I didn't even mention yet is that this is completely free training so they train you for free and then if you actually do well enough in their program you can get a free voucher and then you can go and get um, you can go and test for free so grateful to Prescola but um, as you'll see in this it also takes a lot of work on your own part and that's what I'm here to encourage you about so before getting into tips, here's my summary of the exam. The CompTIA a certification is an entry-level computer certification for PC computer service technicians. It's a tongue twister. But it's used to certify the competency of entry-level PC computer service professionals in installing, maintaining, customizing, and operating electronic devices. So there's no quick and easy way to pass. Obviously, that's super dense. There's a lot of information that it covers. And there's no one that I went through the program with who said, oh, it was easier than I thought. No, it's a lot of material and um, it's very comprehensive. It covers wireless networking, it covers security, it covers troubleshooting method, it covers hardware installation, it covers operating systems like Mac, Windows, Linux, so many more. We, we built a Raspberry Pi in the program. Um, we were working with virtual machines. So obviously, you know, you're going to learn a lot of stuff, but once you do, then you're so prepared for your first job because people are throwing all these quick IT ac acronyms at you. Like, here, let me grab one from my, my deck of index cards here. Like PCI DSS. Let's use a different one because I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what any of these mean actually. I forgot. 
Splunk? What is that? Let's use something like DHCP, right? Okay, so DHCP is a protocol that automatically assigns an IP address to your computer, right? So things like that, like people use that on an everyday basis. Like I, I hear it all the time at my job. I'm an IT specialist or IT engineer at a school. And so like, you know, that term gets brought up all the time. But like once, it, like say, say you didn't know what that was before you took the A plus exam, but then you know, then you take the A plus exam and you know what that means. And you're like, oh my God, I put in all that work. This exam was so comprehensive, blah, blah, blah. But then you go to work and then you're sitting there on your coworkers and they're like, oh, they're just rattling off these terms, but you already know what it means. And you just flow into the conversation because you're like, oh, I already knew what that, I put in the time, put in the effort, da, da, da. So it's like, yo, it, it all pays off. It's worth it. That's why, you know, I'll just say it right now before I even begin. I think the A plus is so important to get um, because it's so expansive so like even if you don't know what area of it you're going to go into yet the a plus gives you a great foundation because yeah it touches on basically almost any area that you can go into so yeah that's my little plug so entry level certification there's no quick easy way to pass but if i can give you two areas to focus on they would be course objectives number one and number two is the syntax the comp t course objectives are not as in-depth and descriptive as professor messer's course notes um which i'll link to in the description box below but if you can if you can explain every single course objective that's on the exam before you take the exam um then you're going to be all set so that's one way that i used um as just a gauge of whether or not i was ready for the exam right so like you schedule the exam you register for it and, and all that so um you have time to prepare when you're going to take it and i said to myself like if i can at least look at all the objectives that are on the comptia uh objectives website and i can explain what any of these objectives are at random then i know i'm ready so like that's a good way to gauge whether or not you're ready for the exam cool so that's the course objectives secondly yeah the phraseology okay this is huge guys it's the wording it's the way that CompTIA has written these questions, right? So um, it's widely known as a tricky part of the exam and because it's standardized testing, it's like the SATs. If you take the SATs, you're from the East Coast and all that, it's standardized testing. So they just do it, they write these questions in a way where it has to it has to be applicable to everybody. Um, but the questions are not straightforward. So for example, instead of asking, which protocol is port 993 used for? Uh, rather, the CompTIA test will give you situational scenarios where you have to use context clues to come up with a solution. So for example, you hear things like, the client is experiencing trouble with their email and has come to you for assistance. So they're unable to receive emails. And when you look at their settings, you notice that POP3 is set to port 1004. What is is the first step you should take to resolve this issue so you know what i mean like it's a literal paragraph for a question that's asking okay like what's wrong what's the issue here and the issue is wrong port number so you really have to reverse engineer the process you have to use what you know to decide what is wrong and what is what should be right it's kind of confusing and if you're not prepared for it it's not going to go your way so i just want to give you the heads up on that before you even jump in Okay, enough of the chit chat, let's get to the business. Let's get down to it. So here's how I was successful in four simple steps, right? These are my steps. These are not things that I pulled off the internet. I mean, they are, but it's not like from anybody else as a whole so what i did was i basically looked back on the what my study methods on how i studied for the exams and i also am just a naturally motivated person so i listen to a lot of podcasts from people like jim quick people like how i built this people who are just very inspiring to me and so i pull little things and tips and tricks from them and i basically saw what i applied from those people into my study habits and so i'm putting all that together and broke it down into four simple steps for you and um let's get to to it number one number one number one learning how to learn and learning how you learn so think about how you currently absorb new information what are your habits when you watch videos when you read when you study how well do you retain or recall that information afterwards so here's something that I picked up while preparing for the exam. So like I said, I listen to people like Jim Quick a lot. He has a great podcast on how to learn more efficiently. And he has an acronym for the word FAST. It's the letters F-A-S-T, where the F stands for forget, 
the A is for action, S is for state, and T is for teach. I'll get into that right now. So the forget is forgetting what you already know, right? So you're coming into this CompTIA A, A plus exam, right? You, you made the decision to take the exam and you might have a little bit of an ego, like maybe you already are a gamer or you build computers or you already are working in IT and you're like, I just need the certification, da da da, so I, but I already know. Like, listen, I would say the best thing, the best thing for you is to come in with a beginner's mindset. So forget Forget what you already know, forget your expectations of how you're going to perform, um, forget the distractions, and also forget, here's the biggest one, your limitations. So for myself, I came from a whole different field. I did not come from IT. I came from audio engineering, audio visual technician, right? So my limitations in my mind were like capped out at technician i was like there's no way i can be an engineer but here we are today right it's not even been a year so i want you to forget your limitations and to remember that what you tell yourself that you're able to do that's what you're going to end up being able to do so if you tell yourself i'm going to win i'm going to pass i'm going to do it and in quotes you put it you put in the work that's what's going to happen for you the A is for action, right? So learning is not a spectator sport. Take great notes, ask lots of questions. For myself, I'm personally not someone who's always jumping on camera on Zoom and asking the professor, hey, like, you know, blah, 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 can we answer this? Can we get into that? I'm more of a listen, and if someone else asks a question and something comes up that I don't know about, I'm gonna just take notes and look it up after class or like on Google because like I'm not really, you know, I'm not like type A like that. But if, if you are, even better, all the more reason for you to take action. Uh, the S is for state. So you are responsible for your state. The way you move, the way you stand, the way you sit while you are engaged, all learning is state dependent. So curiosity, joy, and fascination are all states. I think he's talking about state of mind here. So what state of mind are you going into this learning with? Are you already defeated? Are you like what do they call that when you're mellow you're just in the middle or are you like i'm excited like i'm trying to attack this i'm trying to go all in so be mindful of that a quick side note and this is one of the little things that like i put in here for my own self is attach your learning to your innate interest right so innate is like what's what you were born with so i would say hone in on teachers that you like when i say teachers i mean people on youtube like network chuck you know you got it what's the name zach from it career questions like people like that so if you like those people watch their videos if you don't like them find people you do like watch if you like animated videos or you like things with um with animations and um i'm not talking about anime i'm talking about like if you like graphics then watch videos like that if you tend to take breaks in between studying um make sure you do that if you like to work in a public space but be on your own so like that was like me in college i had to go to the library because i couldn't focus in my own dorm room there's just i don't know too, not, not enough going on but at the same time i also need to be in my own space while other people are working it's also a little bit more motivational when you're like around other people who are working so all to say find out what your learning style is and um implement implement that into your study habits the last letter is t t is for teach so learn everything as if you're going to teach it to someone else why would you do that you might ask you pay attention differently when you realize you have to teach something back to someone and the bonus is that you get to learn it twice another one of the youtubers that uh, i love to watch his name is jorge he has a, a page called network engineering academy one of his suggestions is to watch an entire video twice so the first time is for listening only and the second time is for taking notes so this is if you're trying to understand something and maybe you're on like the power cert youtube channel you're watching a video on like i don't know a wireless router like if it's a brand new concept to you the first time just watch it absorb it. don't be worrying about notes because your brain can't handle all that like at the same time like it's multitasking so just worry about absorbing it then watch it the second time maybe on like 1.5 speed speed it up for yourself and then that way yeah da 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 and i kind of hit on this already before but i'm going to just repeat myself find out your learning style so are you visual are you auditory sensory i'm a visual learner so graphics and animated uh, demos are the best way that information will stick for me. I need to understand anything from a bird's eye view or more from like a ground up perspective. So I can't just jump right into the middle and start learning from like the middle of a chapter. I really have to like start from the beginning because it's like watching a movie halfway through. I just feel like I missed out on the fundamentals. So I'm always going to start from the bottom up. And if you're like me, that's how you should approach learning. Um, probably another one of the most important things. 
embody a figure it out mindset that's literally all it is all about right so like even right now we're in my in my position i work on a team with it technicians who are we work in different schools all in different schools around brooklyn but i'm in my own station right so i can text them at any time and say hey i have a question but what would be better like if i constantly ask them for help or if i tried to figure out something else on my own first before i went and asked for help right so um whatever you're struggling to understand just think about it like this like somebody has already figured it out especially on the CompTIA A plus exam, like any concept on the exam that you're having trouble figuring out, someone has already figured out at this point because the exam has been out for years and years and years. So it's just a matter of finding out that information online, just doing your research. Okay, are you still with me? I know I'm moving fast. It's a lot of information. I'm trying to squeeze it into 12 minutes. We'll see what happens.